You ever had childhood dreams? Fighter pilot? Astronaut? Inventor? You know, there's such a very thin dividing line between inspiration and obsession. Well, many of us may harbour a grand vision, but only a few of us would risk everything to turn that vision into a reality. Paul Childs, however, is someone that did. My name is Paul Childs, uh, formerly from Porter's Head in Bristol. Um, I am 43 years old this year and decided to sell the house and move onto a boat and restore it and hopefully have an adventure on the sea. I chose a 1952 motor torpedo boat called the Gay Archer. Being the son of a British aerospace designer and a draftswoman, Paul has had engineering in his blood since birth. Initial restoration projects included cars and a motorcycle. This was later followed by an ARV Super 2, a Pientipole air camper and a Casa built Baker Youngerman. But Paul is someone who always seeks bigger challenges. Being like a submarine, uh, instead of using stealth underwater, it uses its speed and agility to be able to launch the torpedoes at ships. So a crew of a crew of 16 against a crew of 1100 on a battleship, uh, there's no there's, there's an easy justification to use a boat to go into war. Begun! Fire! 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 understand why they're like the spitfires of the sea uh, very fast um, they didn't have a long lifespan but that's why they were exciting they were just pure power I bought this one which had been sat in this yard for 27 years I've been looking for one since I was about 20 so it's taken me a good 23 years to find one um, and I was uh, introduced to a gentleman from the British Powerboat Trust down at Southampton and they actually put me in touch with the owners of this boat when the, when the gentleman who owned it died. He looked after it and preserved it, which is the main thing, because without him going around putting paint on and, and sorting things out, uh, the boat could have died many, many years back. But because he carried on doing what he was doing, it enabled me to take up the ropes and finish her off. It's a dream realised in the, in the sense that it, it was there. It's a golden opportunity. You don't get many, uh, and something like this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so I thought I'd take it. Bought for the handsome sum of just one pound, it was the last wish of former owner Frank Lunt that his vessel be restored to its original condition in order to act as a lasting tribute to the men and women who served in coastal forces. The Admiralty thought that they, they needed a fast attack type of craft for attacking a vast and heavily armed uh, German e book flotilla, and there was, and there's a lot of German submarines. So they introduced the Masby motorized anti submarine boat at the start of the war, and they developed from the Masby into the motor gunboat and then the motor torpedo boat as they found further uses for coastal forces as the war developed. Due to their very design, the boats themselves were hazardous to the men that crewed them. The boats they were handling were very flip, well, quite sturdy wooden boats, but nevertheless, in, in, in comparison with frigates and destroyers, relatively flimsy, but wooden boats. Um, fuel by high-octane fuel, equivalent to aviation fuel, and, and quite heavily armed. And these boats had to fling themselves into action um, on, in, in very dark circumstances, because they went out at night, um, in the early part of the war until 1943 they did not have radar so they were going blind 
and it must have been a very frightening experience for young men. During the Second World War, coastal forces were engaged in a variety of operations. They hunted E and U boats, disrupted German supply convoys, protected Allied shipping, and performed covert insertion and withdrawal missions. Coastal forces employed various strategies in order to ensure a successful torpedo attack. One of the tactics which the torpedo boats would use would be to lie in wait in front of the German convoys. And they would stay still so they were undetected. Sometimes they would even attach themselves to one of the navigational buoys. So if it showed up on the radar, they thought it was a buoy and not an enemy vessel. And then as the convoy approached, the gunboats would attack from seaward to draw the attention of the escort away from the merchant ships, leaving the uh, Torpedo boats go in quite slowly to their very close range, power their torpedoes, and then step on the gas and get out of here. The Archer is the last of the 12 gay class motor torpedo boats that operated between 1952 and the 1960s during the early part of the Cold War. Besides the Archer, these were the Bombardier, Bowman, Bruiser, Carabineer, Cavalier, Centurion, Charger, Charioteer, Dragoon, Fencer and Forester. The histories of their operations are still shrouded in secrecy. The most brilliant uh, occasion I can remember was uh, on this uh, exercise near Copenhagen uh, trying out a new propeller and taking her up to her maximum speed in glass calm waters um, right past Elsinore Castle when she reached her 45 knot maximum and just uh, tipped slightly forward as she planed for her maximum speed and uh, they are very exciting boats to, to serve on board. Uh, the worst thing that happened was only about uh, three or four days later when uh, one Sunday morning after we'd all refueled with 100 octane petrol the night before, um, the boat alongside us, the uh, Stoker mechanic went aft in order to start the um, generator for the day's work and it had a faulty electrical switch. Uh, when he pulled the starter, the petrol vapor uh, blew the whole of the uh, upper deck of the torpedo tubes off and set the boat uh, ablaze and poor old Gay Archer was set on fire on her starboard side and sufficiently damaged to have to be uh, strengthened and sent home early and it was, uh, it was a pretty frightening experience. Supporting this mammoth task, Paul is lucky to have an understanding wife, Rianne. Not too bad, not too bad, self-cleaning, self-motivating. <laughs> The only thing is, is the engine management system is useless. No, it just doesn't like warnings. <laughs> well, we're selling the house, um, so we have a budget at the moment of uh, 100 and, sort of 120 grand-ish. Uh, we've sold the house for a bit more, but we've got debts to pay off and credit cards and things before we go there, so we go there debt-free. We're going to be moving into a caravan, which really isn't a problem because I've done it before. Um, when I did my first degree at Dartington, uh, I was living in a static caravan in Paynton, so I'm used to doing that. He's saying about sort of two to three years, but I know what Paul's like. Once he gets to be in his bonnet, it could be quicker, but he also has a very short attention span, so if he gets bored, it could end up being a lot longer too, and get distracted doing other things. So we'll just have to see how it goes. With all plans in place, Paul is ready to take on the long and difficult task of restoring the Archer. Working single-handed for the majority of the time, he aims to restore the hull and internals, replace the decks, build a new wheelhouse and have her look in as per the original launch in 1952. 